My next couple of animals, the last two animals we're meeting today, are both lizards. I love lizards. Australia is the land of the lizards. We've got hundreds and hundreds of species of lizard. The two that we're going to meet now are very special. They are some of our more aquatic species. This first bloke, the largest of his kind in Australia. This is Zilla. And Zilla is an eastern water dragon. Now, eastern water dragons are the largest dragon species in Australia. They're even bigger than our frillies. At full size, a big male eastern water dragon like Zilla can be over a metre long. That does include the tail, but they are a very large dragon species. Now, they're a very common sight in northeastern Australia, and in fact, in Brisbane and Sydney, and even down slightly further south, in Sydney, these guys are very common along rivers and even in parks and botanical gardens and things in our capital cities. They will often be seen sitting on park benches and next to ponds and things, but typically they would have been found along these rivers basking on branches and fallen logs and things with their tails hanging down into the water. If any predators came along or they got a bit of a shot, they know where the water is and they can jump straight down into that water source and they can stay submerged for around about 20 minutes to half an hour. Although they can sleep underwater a little bit as well, which means they can stay underwater a lot longer. The males are a lot bigger than the females. He's a decent sized male. He's definitely got a very, very big head for a male. But they can, uh, they can be a little bit bigger than this as well. And the males also tend to get nice red bellies and even red under their neck. Now it's not the breeding season at the moment, so he hasn't got his best colours on. But in a couple of months time, as it starts to warm up, He's definitely going to colour up a little bit more to impress all of his girlfriends. Now these guys live in groups that we call a harem. There's be one boy and all of his girls that he looks after and he will fight with other males to keep his girls safe. Just like other dragons, if he sees another boy, he'll start nodding his head. And that means I'm in charge, this is my territory, what are you doing? And if the other boy slowly waves his hand, it means you're in charge, I'm just passing through, no issues. If the other boy starts nodding his head, they can end up in a fight for the territory. The winner gets to stay, gets all the girlfriends, and gets to breed and pass on his offspring. Now these guys pump out a lot of babies. They can have something like 10 to 20 eggs in a clutch. They can lay multiple clutches over the breeding season. And when they're born, they're very, very small and lots of things like to eat them. So they have to pump out as many babies as possible to make sure that they don't accidentally all get eaten by predators. And some of them have the opportunity to grow up. Now we're seeing some amazing evolution in these guys at the moment, especially up in Brisbane, because these guys have adapted to living around people and have gone from basking on logs over rivers in the forest to basking on park benches in the middle of parks. We're seeing them begin to adapt. Their legs are changing shape a little bit. Their behaviour's changing so that they can bask on concrete bollards and stay in, born out in the middle of paths sometimes and trip people over. But we're seeing them adapt to their new habitats. Very rapid evolution in some of their populations. Now, there's two subspecies of these guys. This is the Eastern Water Dragon and their very, very close cousin, the Gippsland Water Dragon, starts, I think, just north of Canberra and comes down uh, through Gippsland. Doesn't quite make it to Melbourne, although both, both Eastern and Gippsland Water Dragon can now be found in different parts along the Yarra River where they've been introduced. These guys are quite popular as pets because they're really big and beautiful. It's kind of Australia's answer to the green iguana. And so they're quite popular as pets and sometimes people accidentally let them escape and they've started up feral little populations. I think there's a little population of them in South Australia as well. They're not, definitely not supposed to be there. There's not really a lot of large semi-aquatic dragons for them to compete with so they're not really doing too much damage where they're found. But still, it's a species that's not supposed to be there and so we've got to keep an eye on them to make sure we don't accidentally end up with a feral pest that's actually a native species as well. We definitely don't want that. Now I'm gonna pop Big Rex, a uh, Big Zilla, sorry, away. <laughs> we used to have one of these guys called Rex as well. I'll pop him back. Stop, Rigmo. Get out. 